This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studio in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, it is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to talk tacky tech, tacky tech and gadgets. That that can be. That can be. I mean, you know, everybody's looking at their gift-giving guys, right? Uh, you've been to the store. You've seen the weird stuff they have. Microphone with, or I'm sorry, mouse with Skype on it, I heard about from te- This Week in Tech This Week. What? Have you heard about I that? I haven't heard about it. It had a... It, 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 it had, it had at it. sticker it, and no, a logo? It, 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 no, 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 no. It had a microphone on the mouse that the Skype call goes over in a speaker. It was horrible. Um, but uh, it, they, were, they were making a point. Uh, but that was a different podcast. John Chichilla is with us in the studio with us after his week hiatus. Now this episode is all about you. Oh, nice. Welcome. I'm back. It's, it's good to be back. It's good to have you back, good sir. And this is the last normal episode, of course, before we do get into our Christmas episode and next week with a whole host of guests that I still need to invite. Uh, and, you know, it's our year end. We go over the, the year in review, our predictions for next year. I'll pull up all the predictions from last year's show that thankfully I have producer Missy to line all those up for me uh, so I don't have to scramble for them anymore. No, you should have written down last year on, uh, on and it's no big deal. You, you've done all the work. Producer Missy is here hanging out, giving me funny looks as usual. Uh, but anyways, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can check us out here live on the Facebook page, Awesomecast uh on the twitter and then you have a great group awesome cast on the facebook groups where we talk about a lot of stories throughout the week you can subscribe to us and follow us on itunes stitcher spreaker google play music iHeartRadio, radio and video versions on the youtube and facebook page and of course like i said we're here 7 p.m eastern every tuesday until the holidays and that'll change a little bit thank you to our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com carrying us saturday mornings at 9 a.m and that's what you've been listening to if you do join us on the live stream before we go live uh we uh we uh, uh play a little bit of them to get us in the mood and thanks to our friends at the 405 media.com representing us on the west coast 9 a.m pacific time five days a week as a noon uh eastern time for you guys here in the pittsburgh area and thank you to our patreon supporters just saw the payments come in today matt weller at the coffee club five dollar level he gets the gold talk where we talk about nest cameras for a little bit here matt underscore weller on the twitter one t as well as uh mike fedor michael fedor uh, of the uh, mike fedor on show on twitter at the fan of the show dollar level you guys support the show too help us literally keep the lights on here in the studio patreon.com slash awesome cast and Ooh. special for our patreon folks yes that nice little treat that they get from us each year for yeah. being awesome awesome supporters of the show yes they do i'm gonna be working on some special treats for them nice. this week are we are we mailing them to the the far away people we, we, have, we have a lot of focus because be. we are we are at least national it's patreon yes. cor- corporate jet the, corporate jet we're going to get on the sorgatron media corporate jet uh, which is the SM Southwest Airlines. <laughs> the, what, yes. the SM. <laughs> yes. Hey, I've, I've got some uh, air miles to you cash got some in. Air, we could cash in those air miles and go visit so, some friends. We, we could totally so, do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you so much, everybody, supporting the show there. You can please uh, support us. You, you, we have, of course, you get the Mayhem Show Gold, where we talk about a little extra, maybe a little more in-depth, maybe stuff that just has nothing to do with what's on the show. Maybe, maybe usually I'm asking Chilla technical questions about things that he's done with and get some advice. Uh, and also the $10 level. Uh, where you get the state of the show and get a little bit more involved in that in the $20 executive producer level, or you get some other goodies for that. So let's get into the awesome things of the week. I am excited, Sheila, because Desert Bus is coming to VR. Have we talked about Desert Bus on here before? We have to have I don't talked about the Desert Bus. 
The, Wait, is this the one where you get in? It's a real bus and you just get in and it's big TV? Yes. You're okay, just, yes, we you, have. You just get in. It was a Sega CD Wait. game as part of a Penn & Teller ridiculous mini game, uh, 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 game on Sega CD. And it's be, uh, it's Penn and Teller Smoke and Mirrors 21 years ago. Uh, by the way, I think it, you, you can grab it on Steam. But anyways, uh, the Desert Bus and VR, the point of the game is you're on a bus and you're driving the bus for eight hours from Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas. I, you know, we have not talked about I'm thinking we, we were talking about a Mars. There was a tour of Mars on a bus. But this, <laughs> what? this looks... A, 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 interesting so so the whole so point it's, it's real time though it's eight so hours this has been a game that has become huge and it's become become a call classic the whole idea is you're playing the game and it's straight eight hours of just and and in wonderful 16-bit graphics at the time and the uh the alignment on the bus was off so you do have to always like like kind of bring it back over onto the highway every once in a while so you have to pay attention to do it and your prize for getting to the eight hours is being able to turn around and go back to Tucson. <laughs> All right. So there have been I, I discovered this because there are um, um, charity. There's a big charity stream on like Twitch and everything where they play this game for eight hours for charity. And see how many laps they can get on the desert bus. So I'm imagining the wheels on the bus go round and round you could sing that for eight hours if you like. Ninety nine bottles of beer on the wall. But, well, there's a whole slew of Yeah. Sorg is gonna be there in his VR gear and just singing that. There you go. There you go. It, it's is, is Chachi doing Chachi plays again? Uh that is a discussion for because there could be a sidebar where there's another group that's just doing twenty four hours of bus rides back and we forth can just, from we Tucson. Can, we can just <laughs> check in. Catch, catch the bus to Chachi plays. <laughs> Oh, Chachi Bus 2017, 2018, I guess. Uh, that's a really good idea. Somebody somebody tweet Chachi and let him know. Oh, he's not on Twitter he's anymore. On Twitter. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Somebody, or, I don't know, somebody plurk Chachi and let him know that we're, uh, we're, we're making plans for him. So, uh, so it, it, it's actually kind of funny because the game, the, the original game, Smoke and Mirrors, Penn and Teller's uh, Smoke and Mirrors, was actually never launched. But a ROM made it into the wild, and that's where people have been playing it on emulators ever since. So... Like it's it's just a really interesting, awesome. Uh, it's developed by Dinosaur Games and it's being uh, published by Gearbox Software. Gearbox of course has done a lot of stuff over the years, including I mean I remember them as early as a PC conversion of Halo. Uh, so you know it's 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 pretty awesome that they they took this on. Nice. Uh, so that, that's my little uh, VR uh, fun for this week. I'm hoping that I know it's on Steam. I'm hoping I can get a version for my old Samsung uh, Gear. Uh, perhaps as well, or there might be some other options as I'll talk about here, hopefully later in the show. Chilla, you got some Android news. I got some Android news. So um, there's been word of uh, app for, direct from Google called Files Go. Um, it, it seemed to leak onto the App Store very momentarily, uh, I think a week or two back. Um, it's an application that kind of goes after Microsoft's new device to device file transfer service or device to PC uh, transfer service for Android and obviously goes head to head against uh, things like airdrop. If you're an Apple user, um, I use airdrop a lot. So I'm actually really looking forward to this because usually what I'm airdropping is pictures to other people that are actually mm -hmm. stored in Google drive <laughs> in Google photos. That's hilarious. <laughs> so this just makes perfect sense um, for, for the Android people that I know. Um, this lets you take and do direct device to device file transfers. Um, you don't have to have internet access or even wireless access. It goes right over Bluetooth. Um, so no internet required. The other interesting thing it does, and I haven't gotten to play with it because I just noticed this when I was on the way home from work today. Um, it also allows you to see and manage applications, games, photos, etc. So they're they're claiming, and I, I'm I'm very interested in how they got the telemetry data out of this. But Google says that the average person using Files Go has saved an average of one gig, compared to those not using it. Now I don't know if that means one gig of data on their phone, or they've cleaned up one gig of data off of their phone, finding mm -hmm. cruft and crud, um, kind of like how 
uh, Apple now lets you do it. It will auto remove applications that you haven't used uh, in, a, in a long period of time. Um, this is for Android 5.0, Lollipop, or later. So most most of your current phones will get this, um, even when phones three, four years old, depending on what. Wait, you so is this something that's going to come down automatically, or is it? It's an app that you nope. do need to go get. It's a snap that you do need to go get. Now, okay. who knows? Will they will they include this in a future version of Oreo? Seems will to make people, sense. Will Will manufacturers just bundle this like they do sometimes Google Drive? Um, will they make this mandatory as part of um, Google? What is it? Google Managed Services. Um, okay, so this. Uh, so I got confused because like right before the show, I was looking through the news and I saw something about Oreo Go. And I thought that's what this was, oh, but that's something completely different. What's, what's Oreo Go? So apparently, Oreo Go is a, is a, 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 a edition of Oreo Android uh, for low end phones for low-end with phones. things under uh, one gig of RAM. So that, that absolutely makes sense. So uh, I don't know, just you know, the file file. Um, just a little bit of branding confusion, I guess. Uh, we it was weird that both of them came up the same day too. So. Uh, but no, that's awesome. And, and I do wonder if eventually we were talking about a little bit before the show about this. Is this something that I, you know, is there going to be maybe eventually an iOS version? I don't see why not because Bluetooth Especially is since Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're not, there's nothing mm. proprietary happening. It's not an NFC chip. It's not, you know, that, that uh, I guess iPhones now have. Um, but, uh, but so even that has its own thing. Um, but it, it would be great if it broke down that barrier that, hey, I can send your Samsung this or, or Chachi's uh, Samsung. Okay, everybody has a Samsung. I just realized they're Pixel. Some people have Pixels. That's right. Uh, uh, Krauss has a Krauss Pixel. has a Pixel. That's right. Some so. people have HTC and LG. Yeah, you know, I mean, some some, some people. You know. <laughs> but, but no, I, I like to see that it is, um, anytime it's accessible for that crazy <laughs> ecosystem that happens over with Android. Mm-hmm. So, absolutely. Oh, I thought you had something to say. You were just adjusting. Yes, I'm just okay. adjusting. Producer Missy is adjusting. We we got her a cool arm thing over there for. She has microphone. one cool arm. She has one cool <laughs> arm. Yes. The other one not so much. It's a little weird. <laughs> the other one's a little lame and floppy. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, I don't know where that went with that. So, all right. So you're awesome. Thing. Go get files. Go if you're on Android. Tell your friends too as well, so you can save. Can, can it share to a computer with this? I have not seen anything that can share to a computer, but it wouldn't surprise. So here would be an interesting yeah. play as if you had a Chromebook yeah, and you loaded up the Android there app. How would that so work? So that would work. But, but um, like, was, that's when uh, one thing I use AirPlay for AirPlay. No, AirDrop for is I took some pictures. It hasn't synced up with my Google photos yet. <laughs> and I wanted to bring over a video or something. And um, it, you know, that's how I, I throw, like, we took a bunch of video for Small Business Saturday, and I want to bring them over to a project on, on my, my, app, my Mac. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it makes sense to send it over over that airdrop as well. Or for those of us that have a bandwidth cap on our phones, unlike yeah. yourself, you don't, have to, you don't have to wait to get to Wi-Fi, right? It's a direct... It's a direct connection between I, the two devices. I always feel so bad when we're in somebody like like Katie was talking about before about she didn't realize how much data like Animal Crossing was taking up. She's like, I gotta wait till I get wi- on Wi Fi to play it. I'm like, what? Like, I, how much data? Does she apparently, have? a lot. Apparently, it takes well, up a bit. But even then, like, and and this, I'm really interested in talking to people in this fiasco because, so I don't have unlimited data, but mm-hmm. but we have fifteen gig a month. Yeah, shared between three phones. Right, which is you, your wife, and the, my second phone, and, <laughs> and 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 my second self, me, my wife, and me. <laughs> yes, as it should be. Um, <laughs> so you can send all your comments to Chillamode at awesomecast. Uh, at, or I'm sorry, at sorgatronmedia.com. That was a total joke. Oop, I oop. was not <laughs> trying to be serious. No, but in all seriousness, so so, so we have the three phones. Now I will say that. The Android device is 99% connected to Wi Fi. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't make a lot of phone calls with it. I do use a lot of data on it, but again. Phone calls? Who makes phone calls? <laughs> but but again, I do. I do. I have a lot of apps. I test a lot of applications, um, et cetera. But typically, when I'm using it, I am around Wi Fi. On the iOS side, it's my go to device. It's the first one I pull out of my pocket by default. Um, and I am on and off Wi-Fi a lot on it. Um, that being said, we go to the gym, each of us, three times a week. 
Um, the gym has horrible Wi-Fi. We watch Netflix. We stream. I stream SUW. Mm-hmm. Um, I stream right from my TiVo at home. Um, all cellular. So that's minimum six hours of high def streaming mm-hmm. between the two of us. And even if I throw in like a follow on week of vacation where Christopher's in the backseat streaming Netflix for a six hour car ride to and from the beach, um, we cannot hit more than 10 gig of data. I mean, it, it is work. What is this world you live in? It is work to hit. Are you gig just of data. bathed in Wi-Fi everywhere you no, go? That, but that's my point. We're not because think about it. Yeah. So six hours a week, and that's four weeks out of a month. And you're not turning on. You're not. You're AT and T. Yeah. And you're not. Did you turn on the? Um, there was the the streaming stuff they were no, doing. No, I did not. Turn no. On so any it's of that. It, so it's not it's not as crunching <clears throat> down your 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 video when you're on cell. No. Because I I forget what it's called, but there's there's some kind of something you can turn on there. Um. um okay. Okay. And we get rollover. Oh, so, you get rollover. So I can't get like I All said. Right. I right. can't hit. It um, is. It is. Just, like I've never seen us go over ten gig, which means. Instantly, every month, we have 20 gig of available bandwidth. Do, do you want to take a guess? We have seven lines on our account to our iPads, uh, uh, her parents, and my father. No, but that's their primary internet device, right? Is, no. For their house. No, it isn't. No, it okay. isn't. No, it isn't. No, that's just us. No, it isn't. Because <laughs> they have satellite. Um, I, they, yeah, they have other connections. It's not a big deal. Uh, so, so wife, I, uh, we have an iPad at the house. That is the primary internet connection for the house. Uh, we have, uh, and then, and then there's another iPad that I think your mother has. I, this is, this is so bad when I don't even know what devices are on our yeah, planet anymore. Yeah, dad bought mom <clears throat> a... Would you like to venture a guess, Chilla? With two days left of our plan, how much data we have used collectively in all those? 236 gig. <laughs> Oh wow! I, I I didn't think you were going to go that high. Hundred and eighty-seven gigs. How about? I went over. This is Price is right. I'd be off. I'd be off the showcase showdown. Ah uh, yes. Your little mountain climber just took a dive. <laughs> and oh, I did not realize this. Um, you want to know how much of that is the home internet, which is one. Missy, Missy, I am impressed. You're down to a whole five gigabytes this month, minus the the hundred and some you used to do. How how much Netflixing? Honey, how much data in Netflixing sweet, do we take up, sweetheart? Yes, I have another Comic Con next weekend. You do. That's probably going to bump that up. <laughs> one hundred and thirty six gigabytes on our iPad Pro at home because that's what's connected to the Apple TV. <laughs> okay. And my own personal phone. But in, in, now, when I'm at home, not, now to be fair, when I'm at mm-hmm. home, I'm on Wi-Fi. When I'm at work, yeah. I'd say I'm f- even at work. You because, have like you YouTube's have normal people and internet. things like that. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing how much, like, work stuff I have to get to YouTube for to like see a demo of something or right. see how something works. Um, like all all of Microsoft's information is all in YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times I do have to drop off even our our Wi-Fi at work to watch something. Um, but I will say, most of the time we are on Wi-Fi. But collectively, the other four lines that are our our, our parents lines are under a gigabyte collectively including collectively iPad. collectively yes so what did you say you had 10 devices on there seven seven <laughs> so oh, might as well be 10. five so five of the devices are using yeah all of the bandwidth and uh, one of, and one and them and no them, no no it, three three and one of them never leaves the house right well actually i do bring it up to the office because i realized certain things will not get updated over our cellular Yes, like like my gig and a half injustice two game. Yes, <laughs> we'll say we'll just not have it. Uh, so so and updates and things like that. So I try to at least once a month, every couple of weeks, bring it up to the studio and use the Wi Fi. Did you have issues with it on Saturday? Then Saturday, oh, is it on iOS eleven? I'm not sure if I've updated it. Okay, it's on eleven. Yes. Okay, because on Saturday they spur of the moment released 11.2 because of oh APNS no, 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 no crashing no. app oh no and... i do i have barely been home the last four days okay that's why today i kind of took a day off so um yeah and, and a lot of that is like i'm streaming we we I've, I've used my phone to stream from both handmade arcade and and uh a thing up at the homestead library yesterday 
for Facebook Lives through the uh, high-end live switcher that we've been using. So, yeah, it's it's come in pretty handy. So, all right. You know what else is really handy? Pizza. Thank you to our good friends over at Slice on Broadway. Right up. Whoop, that's it. There it is. Oh, there's that pizza. By the way, I went in there, and there's a, there's a magazine called Pizza Today which I need to get a subscription for The Office for myself because it just kind of makes sense. But our good friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for a good long time now here in Beachview, right up the street, right along the tracks here, as well as our other locations in Carnegie, PA, down on the Main Street, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and new location over in East Liberty that I know some good friends on that end of the city have really been enjoying. And, and I, I, love, I love it when everybody's like, hey, did you know there's one in East Liberty? I was like, oh, I'm well aware. And... You're welcome. Because uh, I like to think it's the podcast bump is why I'm seeing so much success with the Slice on Broadway. But it's probably just because they are kick-ass pizza, good stuff, and everybody has been coming to check it out. Thank you, everybody, that's supporting them. And letting them know that uh, Sorgatron Media Podcast and the awesome cast has been sending you their way and uh, and 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 you know talking about them on Twitter. Hit them up, pgh underscore slice on the Twitter and sliceonbroadway.com. Now with online ordering. As I put away my cellular uh, information, let's get into some more uh, news stories from the week. Uh, we had, oh boy, we had some some stuff going on. I will return to that. I, I, I appreciate it. I, I, it was, I think Doug, uh, in, in the Slack, after we talked about things last week, uh, he did include the video. I, I finally got, I watched the entire thing. Did you watch the video of the 1999 Amazon.com? I, I did not. I, we, I forget if we talked about it on the show or anything, but it's an old 60 minutes CBS News report. They talked to Jeff Bezos and they talked about this is what it looks like for online shopping. And everybody's completely going to be doing this in a few years. And, you know, you just, you know, <laughs> laughable, I know, now in 2017. But it's really interesting to kind of go back and see like the temperature of what that was back then. Look at that young and spry Jeff Bezos. Before he was a trillionaire, but uh, and, and he had a, color in his hair. He had color in his hair. He had light in his eyes, and <laughs> and about to have billions in his pocket. Uh, so definitely go check it out. If you look at 1999cbsamazon.com on uh, YouTube, you can find it pretty easy up there. As long as you're not on a Kindle or as, Amazon device. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh but anyways uh chili chili Chili. wow i'm nice and warm uh uh uh, chilla i like whiteboarding i don't know about (laughs) as much as you do but but (laughs) but we were just talking about this before the show we did upgrade and we have some whiteboards so we can talk to each other here during the show so but anyways this is this is this is not this is not the high end you're talking about, I'm sure. So, well, actually, so if you're familiar with the Microsoft Surface Hub, which is like the big screen TV you can hang on your wall, oh, it runs yeah. Windows. We salivated over that. It's um, touchscreen, et cetera, two, two 1080p cameras, omnidirectional mics, et cetera, et cetera. There, there was a Google one, too, wasn't there, yeah. that we were talking about? Yeah, Google one's a lot cheaper. Mm. Um, but the, that type of device comes, one of the applications that's on it is a whiteboard, and it's built in. Um, and it's a pretty comprehensive whiteboard as opposed to what your typical Skype for business Skype application has for general whiteboarding. Um, one of the things that Microsoft announced earlier this year was that the whiteboard application from the surface hub was coming to windows. So Mm. any tablet could make use of the whiteboard app that's on the big screen. When you think about that big screen, right, whether it's 4k or 1080p, um, even on a computer screen, you're still going to be at 4K or 1080p, so the, the resolution is going to be the same, just bigger device. Um, they're bringing that application over, which I think is amazing because I'm always looking for app. What I'm really interested in is I hope they port this to iOS, but what I'm always looking for is something I can use the Apple Pencil with to kind of sketch mm-hmm. something out, draw it, share it easily with others. Um, this is at least bringing it to Windows, so at least on my even on my Mac that I have a VM that runs Windows, um, I can fire this up and quickly whiteboard stuff out, share it out there. Um, it, it their whiteboarding app just does a very 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 nice job with its inking. So like when you draw a line and paper by fifty three is I think pretty good at this too. When you draw a line and you put an arrow on the end, it kind of like 
right corrects the line. Like if it if you wanted a line to be straight and you kind of draw it and it's not perfectly straight, it's not like you have to take a ruler up and put it on the device, right? It kind of it kind of corrects for that using. Yeah, does that AI. kind of yeah that correct is the snapping? I've I've seen programs that do that before. That, that's really helpful and and especially something like that where it's like we we can't be bothered we need to get the thing done right we need to get the idea out there yeah let it um assist a little bit right yep and so. it's a so uh, microsoft has released this today in public preview mm -hmm. so anyone can go out to microsoftblogs.office.com and and hopefully i haven't i didn't see where the download link is um but you can try that out so mm -hmm. i i am super stoked for this because I, I find whiteboarding i've actually thought about when i finish my office in the basement making the top half of two of the walls whiteboard paint mm -hmm. um, or painting them white and doing glass overlay um, something along those lines to give me that big large scale whiteboard space this is the better option for that so is the whiteboard stuff the new like chalkboard paint that you could get a couple of years yes. ago yes so you nice. can uh, so the one thing that, that we've experienced um, with the whiteboard paint is that it can tend to ghost um, where like if you draw on it constantly some of the areas just don't erase right um, where you kind of get that it's almost like wherever the marker was it cleaned off cleaner than the rest of, of the area over time um, and then obviously if someone walks up there with a sharpie or non erasable marker you're really stuck. Um, and end up, and but it's also much more expensive than the chalkboard paint. But there's no dust. Yes. Um, so, and I, I don't want to put a bunch of dust in my office. But I'm I'm super excited for this, and maybe this would just force me to get a large touch screen. I don't think I'll be getting a Surface Hub, but yeah, yeah, not for the home office unless you really but. start. But I mean, the, the, when I you mean, when you when you start Chile Incorporated, yes, when we we start Chile Incorporated. <laughs> A, a Sorgatron Media subsidiary. Uh, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll have a Surface Hub. It'll be our our dormant wing of <laughs> you know. It's just an idea. Uh, but anyways, uh, if we had line of sight, about. we could network them. There you go. Hey, you know what? If I put long enough of a pole on top of this building, I'm sure we'll be okay. We've kind of at a pretty good uh, 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 height here. So, Chilla, I'm jealous of China. You're jealous of China. I'm jealous of China right now. The the old As, wrestler, the uh, no, no, stuff no, no. I eat on, or the country. <laughs> In this case, the country. This kind of, the country that scared the crap out of me when I visited it that one time. Um, but anyways, Nintendo Wii, GameCube games uh, are going to come to China on the Nvidia Shield. No, I, I I read a I I saw this headline today so it's only like they're only ever coming to china uh the idea is yes apparently nintendo doesn't have much of a a foothold in china gaming in general i think gaming was been mostly banned until i don't know five or ten years ago so everybody's pretty much starting from scratch and there's only certain things ever really gotten in there but in this case nvidia did confirm that new super mario brothers we legend of zelda twilight princess and punch out are coming uh, for the Shield in 1080p. Those were very much not 1080p when they came out. I think in most cases, those were, uh, if we were talking about the Wii, that is an SD console. Like, that is, own, that's not HD. Wii U was their first HD, right? So was that, what, 480? Yeah, so it would be 480, right? So it's a bit of an upgrade for those. And I think some of those titles, like Twilight Princesses, probably has had an HD upgrade with the uh, Wii U, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, others, uh, such as uh, Super Mario Galaxy, are also coming soon and they're going to be uh they're in the shield store i believe and uh they're going to be uh, well the shield itself is uh costs about uh in american dollars uh 226 dollars after translation and the games themselves are going to cost around ten dollars have you tried buying old nintendo games that's an amazing price if that's the case i don't know how that stacks and how accessible that is for chinese uh as, as far as having that much money but i wish i could get like ten dollars it, it, but you don't see Nintendo games on other platforms. iOS and Android versions of, of <clears throat> Animal Crossing and Mario Run that we've seen recently are milestones in this changing, right? So, I, I think what we what we see is, right, we see them release a small trimmed-down console 
<laughs> with all of the games in an, in an emulated state. Oh, yeah, there's that And then too. they sell us those for... Well, even... <laughs> right. And well, well, Virtual Console has been... Mm, rip. Uh, you know, because every time there's a new one, and then you have to wait for that trickle of all the games you want to come out again, right? Uh, that's not transferable. And, and it's been kind of a pain in the butt and, and not... Uh, not as friendly as buying games on other consoles, say, especially uh, throwback games uh, for, for some of them as well. So, uh, you know, so Nintendo, has, Nintendo really controls. Nintendo is like the Disney vault of video games, I noticed. The, the, you know, speaking to the virtual console and things like that. And of course, again, this is a different market. This is a different strategy. Uh, this may not be a call that, yeah, this is maybe going to happen anywhere else. Like Nintendo is not a big thing, I believe, in China right now so but, but but i do not understand why this does not happen for the switch like you, you, you these games are not available on the switch yeah. why because they've decided not yet but they'll be later <laughs> not yet. when they when they release switch versions of all those games and and well, uh, isn't mega there's a mega man coming out next year for, mega man 11 yeah for pc and a couple uh, other basically con- everything. Uh, everything yeah um and that's coming with throwback versions of it's like, coming with or are they re-release or they maybe they're re-releasing because they're they, gonna they're gonna do throwback versions because comcast uh, Com, capcom com capcom com comcast cascom yes <laughs> show title uh if you can Wait, get what was that comcast com um com, i think com 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 cast com com cap com com, cap, com, com. com cap tastic <laughs> cap com castic yes <laughs> Oh, I like that. <laughs> Anyways, but they've been really good about repackaging. They they know Mega Man is the thing everybody wants. They know that that is their bread and butter. And they, you, they like every console has a a Mega Man legacy, right? Where hey, here's all the here's all the Mega Man games. Here's all the Mega Man X games, you know. Uh, and and it sounds like they're going to be re releasing them yet again with the Mega Man X games uh, for the newest consoles here, along with this Mega Man Eleven as well. I look back at the, like Mega Man. The original Zelda. And what was the other one I want? It just slipped my mind. Um, those are like the original uh, Met- Metroid. Like those originals, I would pay easily 10 bucks a piece for. Yeah. On, on whatever system they want to release it to. Um, so here. OK, here's an aside to this a little bit. You know, so I've been... We, we we've talked about the the rampant animal crossing addiction by the way it has invested it has invaded the slack channel as well people are dropping visiting each other camps and dropping pictures in and and getting more people involved from our, the sorgatron media slack network uh but anyways other than that you know what what i have a longing for after what is it two weeks of playing animal crossing now Man, would a phone version of Legend of Zelda be amazing in this in this you know that kind of graphic, uh, not the style, but that graphic uh, ability in in which Animal Crossing is right. Mm-hmm. I you know I keep doing these little tasks and be like, man, it'd be great if I was a little green elf with a uh, with a wooden sword. <laughs> You know? well, and then think about it. You could put it, throw it up on the Apple TV, and or yeah. let, let you use a controller if you wanted to use an, an MFI controller. But they're not so. even they're not even doing that kind of stuff with the with the games. They're making them very like these are phone versions yep. of things. They don't want to put them on Apple TV because they don't want to compete with their own console. But but they're not competing. It's the original Legend of Zelda. I know, <laughs> but they want you to buy. Give you another reason to buy their hardware because they Nintendo always says we are a toy company, mm-hmm. right? They don't. They say we are a toy company. They are selling you a toy to play those. They're games a cereal on. company too now. <laughs> that is nothing new. I That's had true. a Nintendo cereal system back in the but day. They're bringing it back. It tastes like trash. <laughs> I, I can not point that out. But no, there's. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna have to pick up the. Was it Mario cereal? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And it, you can scan it for. The, what do they call them for the amiibos yeah wait is this is the cereal box an amiibo i don't know if it's the cereal box itself but i know it's scannable Jeez. as an amiibo uh back to the animal crossing because the chat room just caught up oh no <laughs> uh they're in now now our, our friend brandon is also addicted mm-hmm. and he's a level 19 it's level 19 man he spent some time on that i think i just hit like 26 uh, uh yeah <laughs> and i know you caught up real quick too right yep <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean i i it's it just you know as far as nintendo games go 
Um, I, I want to like just grab old Nintendo games and play them, like you know, uh, Super Mario Wii and, and New Super Mario Brothers. But it's always just impossible to get those con- those because they they retain their value and they're like you you still need to drop like fifty bucks for like a, a Mario Kart or something for the GameCube. Well, that's like I love that Chachi's been going back through and like doing the what is it eBay. Oh, he's getting those eBay lots for Nintendo games. Yeah. And yeah. he's actually gotten some pretty decent games out of it. He those. has. He has. I, got, I finally got a copy back in Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, because he had an extra copy. Yes. So that's been helpful. So I remember he, because he, he he gets extras, he's got, or the, the lesser, like the ones with marks on them, he puts them aside, and he's going to sell his own lot out afterwards. Uh, and, and I'm just like, let me, how much you, you five bucks for that Ninja Turtles game. <laughs> Because I sold mine back in the day, you know, for some reason, at, at like a moron. But anyways, I still love. I sold a. I sold my copy of Super Mario Three. Realized that was a horrible mistake, and somehow I ended up with two copies of Mario Three <laughs> because they're everywhere. Um. So Google is not happy, or Amazon uh, people are not happy with Google right now. And I'm guessing it's because Google's not happy with Amazon. I think as you were yeah, starting. Yeah. So to say. I mean, this is this is. This is the pissing match that's been happening, where you're not going to find Google Homes and and Apple TVs on 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 Amazon, uh, you know. And, and apparently, this is the next step, right? So, what happened, Sheila? So, Google is, and I, and I read a couple. I, I read an article today earlier that said, as of January first, you will no longer be able to watch uh, YouTube on Amazon devices like the Fire TV. Um, but it it sounds like that's started today so some people that have fired up their fire stick um are getting an, a nice little error that says you're, and, you're no well, longer we have that right here uh doug has uh, put this in the slack for us and he's also he's also been sharing it on his own social media as well starting 18 uh 2018 1 1 youtube will not be available on this device he's got a fire stick uh you can continue to enjoy your favorite creators and videos in many other ways please visit <laughs> https slash colon colon goo dot goal uh mjzw yeah for a list of devices you can use like the worst non-clickable uh it's a short i mean it's a short url give them that but uh still they did not make that easy for you so but that's from doug and he says that uh uh, what, what did you say that his kids, his kids are going to be flying through the walls? Well, so, so his kids, his, uh, his kids have already started to lose their minds over this. <laughs> um, and, and I said, you know, I, I think my comment back was, it's not just the kids, it's the parents that are going to be losing their minds because their kids oh, are going to be tearing down the walls. Um, I, I don't know. I, we've seen this before. I, we still don't have an Amazon app on Apple TV, but Amazon has started selling the apple tv back on amazon.com um and it's but it's not the end of the year yet as you so delicately put it uh, before the show today um this is just another one of those you don't want to sell our stuff then don't we well, are not going to let you use our free services yeah fine thanks a lot youtube yeah. right and it, it, it's funny too because i all i can imagine when you're like the, the, the Microsoft and Apples at this point in time, you're like, yeah, you guys go fight over there. We'll see you later. Like there's, there's definitely, I think there's, I don't think Google actually from a con- consumer perspective, Google's not winning on this one. Cause people like Darda are like, now I have to spend more money to be able to consume your free service. Cause mm-hmm. he's already talking. I'm going to have to go back to the Roku or get a new Roku um, I said, go to Apple TV. Um, someone said, Hey, upgrade to a smart TV. So regardless, it sounds like Doug's going to be spending some money. Um, and Amazon obviously hurts from this because now someone bought one of their devices that for something they really wanted to use it for. And now it's useless. Um, so it's unfortunate. I mean, I, I, there was a, uh, geez, there was something recently, some of the podcasts I've been listening to that, uh like it, it was going end of life because it got bought by somebody else okay. and they was talking about how when you buy something there should be some kind of implicit expiration date say we will support you until x because that feels like that is grabbing people I and mean, we talked about this with the tivo uh multiple times about how great they are about doing that mm-hmm. right and harmony actually just got caught with this maybe um, that's what i'm thinking of so yeah. harmony harmony discontinued 
support for one of their older um, systems where it was like a, you could use your cell phone to control the device and then it would control. The, it's the original one that I had in our house. Um, after after one day of complaints, they said, OK, um, if you go out and buy the new device and ship us your old one back, um, we will reimburse you for the purchasing of the of the new one. Um, because the new one's even been out, I think for two or three years. Um, but yeah, they're, they're staying true to their customer base. So I I don't know what Amazon's going to have to do to get Google to open up. I know Google had this problem with Microsoft back in the day because they had non Google approved applications on windows phone. So you could watch YouTube, but uh, I don't, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. It will be. It will be. Uh, so we we talk about a lot, we've been talking a lot, you know, especially on Awesome Chat uh, and, and other places. We've been talking about a lot of noise lately between social media and everything, right? And uh, uh, Amanda Narcissi, our friends at Bold Pittsburgh, so they know a little bit about writing things. Uh, how about a uh, a wired was featuring. A very stripped down blogging tool that exemplifies anti social media. No share button, no like button. You can go to text.fyi, txt.fyi. You, you're greeted with a little write dialogue and a publish button, and what is this? That gets more into, well, what is this? Um, this is the dumbest publishing platform on the web. Write something, hit publish, and it's live. That's it. And even if you go as an example, here is a blog post. It is live. You get a unique URL here. Nothing fancy. It's a plus and a bunch of numbers and letters, and that's it, right? And uh, and, and that's it. So if you want to go back to basics of blogging, this is the place to do it, apparently. Um, you know, it's, it's longer than a tweet. It's not tied into other things and, and pushing in front of people. But it, and it looks like it's not even tied to an identity or anything. Uh, so you can publish something. If you just want, here's some text. I need to put it out there. Boom. This looks there's like no, the way to do no it. There's no graphics. No graphics at all. No animated GIFs. Nope. No emoji. Nope. Is there a feed for this? Can I see like... Can I just see everything that's been on this? Could, yeah. yeah. The, I imagine no RSS. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a social thing, right? Yeah. Uh... Now, I've seen journaling uh, applications as well. Where, you know, it, it it's just a journaling platform and it's private to yourself and that's it. But it's still tied to my Facebook somehow. <laughs> you know, it's still, I still use my Facebook to log in with it. I love that face you just gave with that. Someone made it into like the choose your own or not the choose your own adventure, like the old text based. Obviously, it's just link options. Is this still, is this in the uh, examples that they give? Yes. The uh, adventure, the adventure example. Hold on. Adventures. So if you go to adventures. And now you're here. You find a quintessential potion, potion vial. You know the kind. The liquid inside glows in very intense pure blue. Sarah never said anything about this. You'd think she would. She would have drink the potion. Smash the potion. <laughs> Our two. All right, we're gonna drink the pro- potion. I'm gonna click on it. The liquid is surprisingly cold as it passes your lips. You feel an odd tingly sensation in your stomach. It doesn't feel great. You want to rub your belly to comfort yourself, but your stick arms won't bend to touch the round ball of snow. What? <laughs> wait, wait, what? You are you are a snowman now. It was a snowman potion. The end. <laughs> but it'd be cool if someone took this and did kind of a choose your yeah. own adventure. I mean, there's still links in it, so there's still mm-hmm. something to it that you can do. Uh, that's really interesting. So yeah, txt.fyi if you just want to put something out there like that. Uh, that could be a fun thing for you guys to play with out there. So, all I wonder, right. I wonder if you search Twitter for txt.fyi if we'll get like everyone's tweets with the links to all of their. Hey, check out my story kind yeah. of thing. So, thank you, Amanda, for sharing that with us as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else do we want to touch on? Uh, this was cool. Uh, and again, I love. Well, the review was very, very clear on this. May not be um, needed very soon, but there was a, a pretty exhaustive review. On uh, uh, HP has a wearable computer for VR, including their own uh, version of their Windows uh, headset. And and <laughs> for a lot of it, they're playing uh, Gears of War, and there's kind of a base station for this thing. And it's a very, um, <laughs> I feel like I, this looks like the thing. Cause I, I was watching a Dell commercial where they were showing some Alienwares, and there was a thing that was like this 
uh, that was like kind of a similar shape that just looks like an obelisk of some sort. And I was like, what the hell is that? It was, it was a commercial running in front of a movie we were watching at the theater. And you know, you see it on the big the big screen, and you're just like, you know, it's like, hey, look at all our cool things. Here's an Alienware cool tower, and they're just this thing that just like came up in an angle. And I'm like, is that a freaking computer? What the hell? Uh, but that's exactly what this looks like. Um, you, you know, they go over the 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 specs of this thing. It's pretty hefty, 16 gigs of RAM. You know, uh, a good good processor and everything. And the idea is, you do wear it on your back. It does. Oh, it does also have a port for the HTC Vive as well. Uh, but you wear it on your back. It has its own headset, which um, just seems like, again, I guess it's it's the Windows uh, VR system of some sort. And there's a, actually a, I didn't know there was a Windows VR experience that they have now as well, like the mixed reality ones. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I guess, their standard. I think we've been talking about it, but I didn't know it was actually out there. Um, and, and one thing I do like about the headset is it flips up. So it's not the thing you have to pull off your head the right way. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I, I, but generally they say it doesn't seem like, you know, as nice as the other ones or anything like that. You can create boundaries with this headset, uh, as well, kind of similar to what the, the Vive does, but they do it with cameras more. Uh, so it, it, it's interesting. Like I said, this may not be necessarily soon because wireless is really kind of coming into play as far as uh, VR headsets. So you don't need to really strap a computer to your back to get rid of all those cords. But still, kind of, I could think of some uses for this. What's the battery life? The battery life, I think they ran about four hours with 3D, 3D Mark. Okay. Um, so seems seems decent enough. So, uh, yeah, so it, it look. It, you're not gonna be. You're not gonna be driving the bus. You're not gonna be driving the, the eight hours from Tucson to Las Vegas, right? Uh, and it's gonna cost you the entire package, close to thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> and that's where they get you, right? I mean, I, I remember the live stream packs, right? That they used to have. I, I could see this kind of being co opted for because we we've been doing a lot of kind of uh, uh, man on the street streams. Where we have to have the, that's what we did for Handmade Arcade. If you go back to their videos from this mm-hmm. past weekend, uh, I was there with our streamer. Uh, you know, make, we were kind of cutting, going back and forth, you know, queuing a video and everything. I'm throwing, pulling up the graphics and everything sitting there. And then we're, I think we're, I think it's a Teradek unit we were u- using. Um, that that's what they're walking around with, with a camera and a microphone and going and interviewing the vendors. So this could be something, I, I don't know, in my head trying to rework this. It could be something that pulls that together uh, again for thirty five hundred dollars, but still, it's kind of an interesting concept. You know, what what else could you do with a quote air quote mobile computer like this? Mm. So, very very nice. I don't know if you would have a use for something like that. Yeah, I'm not seeing. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the space for that right and now. And it's the HP Omen Omen X Omen. compact desktop plus VR back, backpack. If you want to check that out as well, so. Uh, kind of an interesting idea. Uh, Chill. anything else you want to touch on before we head out here this week? Before we head out. So one thing that really got me excited, and I'll probably have a follow-up on it when either over the holidays or when we get back, um, Google updated Google Home, um, and you can now feed it multiple commands at once. This is Ooh. huge for me to the point where I went out and bought a Google Home right away as soon as I heard about this. Um, the minis are on sale for the holidays for 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um so when I come home, it's typically, hey, A train, turn on the TV lamp. Hey, A train, turn on the TV. Hey, A train, turn on the bedroom lamp. Like, well, you got to wait for you it. You got to wait yeah. for it. You got to, it's everyone's a separate command. Um, Google has implemented, you can now, it, it ex- I love how the headline, they accept multiple commands. You can combine up to two, which. Mm-hmm. For my typical complaint, that's actually all I want to be able to feed it. And everything that I've selected actually works with Google, A-Train, and a Siri. Um, so I can actually use them all in tandem. So I can put one of these in different rooms um, and use them no problem. So mm-hmm. I'm super excited about this. This, this may dethrone... Amazon's uh, AI in my my dining room because hmm. that's the first room you had coming in the back Your, door. The the in house uh, 
AI fight yes. that you're having right now. Or maybe I just put them next to each other and mm. let them duke it out. <laughs> but this is actually, now that I have this, it actually brings back my, so I'm not a huge fan of Chromecast. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably going to cause me to plug back in the Chromecast. Because you need a TV component. Now I can use the TV that. component on mm. it. So I could say, hey, show whatever on Netflix. Hey, show this on my TV. Um, I'll, I'll probably start to, to think about that. So pretty darn cool. Awesome. So go check that out. Uh, you start playing with that. So it just kind of rolled out with your Google Homes, right? Yes. For those that have them. Yep. And Krauss has one too. And he, he, he much like me is like the best thing about it's the timer, um, which is like one of the number one things we use. That's a, uh, a Missy perked up. The at the, did it? you, t did you poke up at the, the timer option on the, on the echo? Yes. A little bit. Yes. And you've been using that in here lately. Yes. Because I like that I can set multiple timers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because especially when I'm baking, if I have different things at different times, different temperatures, mm -hmm. I need to be able to so now, maintain it. Oh, so, I do have to get that Wi-Fi back at home so we can get more echoes around the house, which makes sense. But yeah. Still. And, and I will tell you right now that, that, that Amazon did come back competitively with Google through, I'm guessing it's through Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, both the Dot and the Home Mini are down to $30 at most places. Ooh, um, I have to stock up on those. And that includes um, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, but you cannot use their 20% off coupons on, mm. on those devices. Oh, do I want to include a TP-Link smart plug, no hub required? I would. For another $22.99? Sure, why not? Mm. That was, yeah, I think, and that was one of the deals they they were bringing up. Which too. is also a $40 purchase right. as well. So right you're getting, handy. yeah. Oh geez, um, and that'll get you into the the the, the smart, smart home. home. I just want something to turn my Christmas tree on and off. That's here in the so studio. So we have we actually have a scene. You have a scene. So we have Ooh. a scene that's called Christmas. So I can plug it in, and the teddy bear is on my desk, and I would, which we have no shot. I have to pull the shot out next week so you can see the teddy bear. I don't know. Can you see on the wide shot? Maybe no. Well, no, it doesn't. Get, you got to my teddy bears. Where's the teddy There's, bears? Around the desk for you guys on video. So so we have a scene that's set, and the scene is my floodlights in the back, which are smart floodlights. Um, so they can blink different colors. They can do different patterns, etc. Mm -hmm. um, the star shine lights up front, um, a lit up tree outside um, wrapped in white Christmas lights. Um, my front banister inside the house, our Christmas tree and there's one other thing the banister the christmas tree maybe that's it the front lights the back lights so every night at sunset all of that turns on hmm. and then every night at 11 45 all of that turns off if we go to bed before 11 45 i literally tell her to turn off the christmas scene or i tap the button in the home app in, on, on ios um yeah and it all links together magic i think sorg wants to buy a timer like that for the neighbors across the street <laughs> yeah so that creepy elf uh, blow up can it's elf will ferrell mm -hmm. and it's very that it looks like one of those punching bags yeah that you had as a kid that had like a but the decal problem in front is of it. oh i talked about this online the problem is it's lying it's it's right across the street it's one of those like a lot of the blow ups these days have this eerie glow to them like that soft blue kind mm -hmm. of to it. So it's already this ghostly vision of, of Will Ferrell as Elf doing the Santa <laughs> yell. Um, but now when I walk up to my door, it's in the screen door reflecting back at me. <laughs> when, when I go and lock my door at night, it's directly in one of the windows of the door peeking at me from across the street. In fact, because oddly our bathroom door is like our downstairs bathroom door is directly across from our front door. And there's a big window in there. So it snuck up on me when I'm going in there too. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elf haunts me this so, year. So you wanted to do it location-based. No matter where, when, when you're home, turn that thing off. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Just go away. They've been leaving it on all day, too, which is less eerie. That's okay. Yeah. Can we just turn it off at night? I'd be okay with that. We're on a one-way street. Nobody's going to see it. Except me. Every day. Wait, what kind of street are you on? What? Not a one-way. No outlet street. Dead end. No, yeah. dead end street. Yes. 
<sighs> a dead end with the ghost of Elf. At first, I was like, "Oh, they won Christmas. That's awesome!" But now it just haunts me. It's a ghost. Of, it's the ghost of Christmas. Whatever. I. I it's. It's just bothers me. Chilla. That's me. ChillaTech.net. John Chilla on the Facebook. Chilla on, Chilla the, on Twitter. the Twitter. Is ask him about all your home automation needs. Or, or if you have a Google Home and you have cool tips and tricks, let me know because I'm interested. Hey, hit me with the Alexa ones too. I'm still trying to find more ways. Um, oh, the, need, the latest need, I have a post-it note. Smart plug. I have a post-it note to remind me to say, ask her for a daily affirmation that somebody put on my desk a few weeks ago. Yes. So. And she's now giving and, you oh, your she's, daily yeah, affirmation. Now she's giving my daily affirmation. Thank you very much. Is she still going? Is it a good one? Oh, she's having trouble understanding you right oh, now. Oh, okay. Oh, and if you swear at her, I love when she's like, I'm just not going to answer that right now. It's been interesting. Uh, SorgatronMedia.com. Check out everythingawesomecast.com. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Next week is going to be the special Christmas year-end episode. We're going to have uh, try to get a lot of friends out here. We'll be talking about our preview, our, 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 what we think is going to happen in 2018. Were we right about what happened in 2017? Uh, who knows? And if you want to get your predictions and and your awesome thing of the year to us as well, make sure to tweet us throughout the week, and we'll try to include those in the show notes too. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. I know Brand has been hanging out out there uh, in uh, in the Facebook land, uh, and a couple other people popping in throughout the evening. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.